Hey everyone, it's Dave here and today we'll be just pretty much discussing the whole debacle of Virtual Desktop and Oculus Airlink. Now, I'm late, as always, although this time I was basically holding it back because Oculus is rolling out updates as they want. The folk in Europe pretty much gets everything in the last cycle and it's just annoying how they handle things with new updates. So this topic is pretty big in terms of it covers a lot of things politically, performance-wise, like there's a lot of going on behind the closed doors, like it seems simple on the surface. Now how we do things on this channel and you know how I am already. I don't do things political here or just have some discussions of what was going on and just the conflict behind the developer of Virtual Desktop and Oculus. Like honestly I don't care because at the end of the day I'm a customer so the most I care about the product itself and how it performs rather than just spam on the internet or Twitter just my opinions or why Airlink is releasing now, why it was blocking Virtual Desktop from coming on the store two years or just shady practices like I really don't care and a lot of people shouldn't as well. Putting the blame on Oculus or Facebook in general and just calling them evil or anything from that sort it's like fine you can do it on your own opinion that you're making but at the end of the day taking things personal and diminishing the actual features or just applications in general because someone said something or their like behavior online now I'm not gonna kiss ass like I've never done that of oculus or virtual desktop anything basically because I don't play favorites and if something is shit I'm gonna say it's shit and I don't like oculus software at all especially recently with the whole recording bullshit and just the struggle bus that they are selling currently with the recent updates. My background with the virtual desktop is that it always helped me in times that Oculus couldn't so I was always glad that this application like exists and I could support myself doing the videos on my channel. Virtual desktop was always a top tier thing for me. Having said that, that will have no impact on the comparison that we're doing today. But let's get into it because there's a lot. So we'll start basically with the preparation right? With the virtual desktop you have to install the streamer and buy the application for I think 20 bucks or something like that. So that's that part. Everything is free so essentially the only thing you have to have is the latest update of I think 28 version both on the PC and in the headset so the main difference is of course the price because Airlink is free so that's like an instant win on the surface right but to use Airlink you have to pretty much every time you want to connect to your PC flip this stupid button in the settings menu on the application to be detectable by the headset in wireless setting and that's annoying because when you would connect with that virtual desktop you basically just start up the application you connect to your PC as well but by pressing the button in the application already not like getting up from your your couch or taking off the headset for the second time and just press a button like on your mouse on your screen and for whatever reason the button exists for me that's annoying because I have to make an extra step to make things work before I even start playing the game is it a 20 bucks worthy of annoyance probably not so that's first thing already now if you are a person that like to do custom settings or just change like bitrate or anything in general to enhance your performance virtual desktop is pretty much the king here because you can change up your color vibration like bitrate quality depending on your hardware it has an overload of settings to customize your experience Airlink just has from inside a headset of course because there could be some settings like doing on the PC but I'm comparing it to what we have going on in the same moment Airlink has just a dynamic bitrate and what essentially it is like a bandwidth that indicates how much data is sending to your headset through wireless connection so the higher bitrate the higher the image you will get in the headset in Airlink actually you can set the bitrate up to 200 or something like that which on average because in virtual desktop the bitrate changes with the game Airlink still has a way higher limit so if you have a really high performance router or just connection in general in your apartment you can set up really high limits of course for the sake of latency but the image you'll be getting in the headset if you want to push on maximum it's gonna be higher quality having said that virtual desktop is not all about the bitrate it has many more options to customize your visuals so at the end of the day everything kind of balances out and you won't notice like a significant difference between the two but when Airlink is free automatically is better if you're just comparing the situation with price and performance equation which is the nice when it's free. <laughs> Inside the game when well, I'm basically comparing until you fall because to me that's the best game that you can just test out things because the game requires you to have good latency and high graphics as well. To me if we were talking about performance the gameplay will be pretty much the same and it's mostly because playing wirelessly PC VR titles is very much different from every person. Every setup is different and every experience is gonna be different. For example I can say that I did not have any stutters or latency issues in both settings simply because I have a really good environment when I can just play wireless games. So to me the performance aspect was indistinguishable every person is gonna be different because sometimes virtual desktop had some stutters or some games don't work or maybe Airlink completely doesn't work and doesn't even connect to the network you know it's just gonna be different but when I'm speaking for myself inside the headset and the game like nothing was different I was feeling that I was playing the same thing over the same application now the last segment for me is gonna be very unique because not everyone cares about it and not everyone talks about it it's the recording thing we all know by now Oculus shitty software locks for some reason in 90% of the applications you 
play the frame rate to 24 for some reason and that has been the situation since Crashland slash Hyper Dash released at the time so I'm pretty sure there was an update somewhere that period as well that completely screwed the performance in recording video or anything in general like are we surprised that they fucked up something? I am really not because Quest 1 was a struggle as well and seems like they're not gonna revert it because they don't know how so I feel like this is gonna be just pretty much solved in the next headset so this is a very important difference for me for some reason virtual desktop can exceed this frame limit to 30 frames per second which is automatically better even though it's just six frames of difference the fluidity of the video itself seems like an actual video that you can watch without any issues now this has nothing to do with the performance in game when you're not recording but as a content creator myself this is a very critical point because i care about the output that i'm doing i can diminish my experience inside the headset but if i'm recording something the video is more important to me and since the performance for me when you're using Erlink or virtual desktop is pretty much the same if you're recording from both settings for me virtual desktop is a clear king since of the customization and simply not fucking up my footage and that's the aspect that i care about the most i don't know why it happens i'm a specialist in quest footage in general on youtube and sometimes it's like some games pass 24 fps limit to 30 usually it's actually the games that are not on the official store that are on app lab or side quest for some reason i don't know why because i knew exactly what was going on with the audio issues on quest one this time around i'm clueless why it even exists or what's going on like it's a struggle as always but what's new here it always has been it's like concluding the whole comparison here there is a very clear discrepancy between people who want to use a wireless connection if you're a person that just looks for something easy and free not caring about just changing things or just doing an extra work except for this stupid button that you have to press every time you want to connect and want to enjoy pc vr games fluidly airlink is the way to go because i feel like if you're a new person that bought the headset recently you wouldn't spend really 20 bucks extra for the same features that essentially you're getting officially supported by the actual company that makes the headset 99 percent of the people will go for airlink no matter what so there's that on the other hand there are people that want to have the best experience of course but they can customize their settings in terms of hardware they're using color balance latency like every aspect of vr in general i want to have control over what you're doing virtual desktop is the way to go and personally that's my choice as well purely based on the fact that that application let me to record things flawlessly by not having an abundance of problems with the software and when you're doing videos for youtube like that that's what you care about because the performance at the end of the day is the same so really even though airing exists now in the state that it is virtual desktop for me is what i will be using anyways and that's the wrap up of that whole conflict let me know if you want to like know more about other aspects that i didn't cover i think i covered pretty much the most important ones but i could miss something as well it's like i'm not gonna blindly fanboy over something that i loved in the past but now because we have essentially two ways of using wireless feature i'm not blindly supporting something that doesn't work on par with the free feature like i'm not bashing anyone and i'm not uplifting anyone i've been always shit talking oculus software in general because they deserve it and there's no hiding that it always has been like that but as a customer myself i'm looking forward for the best quality products that i get and i don't care about background stuff that's happening so in the final conclusion virtual desktop is the way to go for me but yeah honestly i feel like people just blow things out of the proportion anyways just like with everything this is the era that we were living in unnecessary opinions and being hateful for no reason that's just how it is you know let me know if you want to know something more and that was my vr TED talk see ya